Hey, 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 what's up, guys? It's Colton Lindsay here coming at you live on the WGR Live. I'm actually going to flip this screen because it was commented to me recently that um, you guys couldn't see my, uh, my WGR the right way. So, anyways, cool. Check it out. So, here's what the WGR is all about is interviewing really awesome people, finding out what has created their awesome life, and then learning from them. So hopefully you guys will learn something today. I'm gonna be interviewing a guy named Ruvel Martin. Okay, so this guy, I don't know much about him. I was recommended. He just popped on, so I'll have you come on in just one second. Is um he played pro football in the NFL. Uh, he's now a real estate professional. From what I've talked to him briefly, sounds like a great dude, great dad, great husband, so I'm excited to learn from him. Just to plug real quick, if you guys have buyers or sellers in Utah, get a hold of us. Also, if you're an agent that is wants to win the fight to suck less and start taking your business to the next level, apply for our sales position, okay? Also, if you're into real estate and you want to learn how to grow your business, go to fearlessagent.com, sign up for coaching and training. And if you want to learn to manage your cash flow like financially free rich people do, Sign up for Financial Freedom Nation so we can teach you how to manage your cash flow. So here we go. I'm going to be inviting. Hit that share button. This is an interview. You're definitely going to want to stay tuned and share with your friends. Now, this is his first time doing it. So be patient because technology always gets the best. And there he is, Ravel. Welcome to my live stream podcast. How you doing, my man? Hey, man, I'm doing great. Thanks for the invite. Let me see if I can get this on my uh, page as well. But yeah. I'm yeah, no up. worries. Take, take just a second and share that on. Uh, so Ravel wanted to share this so it plays on his business page and promotes his awesomeness for what he's rocking and rolling and doing. So give him a second because I know that when I'm trying to multitask and share something while trying to listen to someone, I'm not doing either real well and I just uh, start to get a little confused. So take your time there. Let me know when you've got it figured out. And as you guys pop on, Make sure I hey David just said what up send referrals to the WGR sales team here in Utah I appreciate that he's in our financial freedom nation as well Michelle thanks for joining us Tyler Michael thanks for being on here guys hit that share button you ready to rock you good to share it yeah no I couldn't figure it out that's fine I'll, 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 <laughs> I'll later <laughs> we can share it afterwards man um, cool so. First, uh, do me a favor. Every time I have someone come on and, and interview uh, and learn about them and learn with them, I ask that you invite the, the people watching just to share the stream. So do the honor and say, hey, guys, share the stream now. Just do that for me. Yeah, everybody that's watching, uh, please share the stream. There's my sister right there, Kendra. I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, share the stream on your timeline um, and, and share it with as many people as possible, and uh, we can help each other grow. I'd really appreciate it. Cool. Awesome. Thanks for that, man. So take 60 to 90 seconds, and I know that's not very much time, but share kind of your journey to where you're at today. Yeah, so um, I, uh, I guess my business all, all really started with my time uh, in the NFL. I played eight years uh, in the NFL, mostly for the Packers and the Bills. I also did a year with St. Louis and a year with Seattle. Uh, you know, I was always really interested in real estate and, um, my dad owned a couple of rental properties when I was little, you know, my mom and my dad did. And I, um, I, that was just always interesting to me. I mean, you know how that goes with, with your parents doing stuff. You're always interested in what they do. And so, uh, once I got done with football, I was still doing it as well. I, I spent some time with Thin Merrill, uh, from flip this house, um, uh, and he showed a, a couple of tips. He actually came to Green Bay to speak, um, showed some tips on flipping houses. And so when I got out of the NFL, I went right into flipping houses, bought some real estate uh, investments, decided to get licensed. And, um, and here I am now as a, as a licensed agent and team owner of Team RM82. Awesome, man. So, so you started uh, your whole idea of real estate. Your dad owned a couple of rental properties. That kind of trickled. All right. Let's let's see what real estate's all about. Now let's let's talk about what year did you start playing in the NFL? Uh, well, I got out of college. My first year was 2004, and um, didn't make the team. Got cut. Uh, went and played NFL Europe uh, for the Amsterdam Admirals, World Bowl champs, by the way. Uh, nice. And then uh, came back, and uh, that's when I signed on with uh, with Green Bay. Was 2005. Okay, cool. And, and you played, was it wide receiver? Did I have that right or did I say yeah, that wrong? Yep, 2012, okay. my last season. So from 
basically from five, 2005 to 2012. Okay, cool. So you were playing at a time when you started when the economy was on fire. Probably a ton of people were, were spending money on just useless stuff at the time. But then you were playing when the market crashed. As, as an NFL player and your focus being there in the game, did you notice any of the shift in the economy that time or did it not affect you guys as football players that much? Well, you know, that's, that's funny you ask that because I didn't notice it necessarily in the economy, so to speak, and, and what, I, what it had to do with me and playing football. But as soon as I got my first big contract, you know, they tell you in the NFL, you need to get a good CPA, you need to get a good financial advisor, uh, and you need to get a good agent. And so the very first thing that I did was I took all my NFL money, I went off and stuck it with my financial advisor. He put it in a bunch of mutual funds and you know, six months later, I saw everything that I had at that point. Um, I was left with probably about 30%. And I'm like, this is, Whoa. you know, absolutely terrible. And I remember telling my financial advisor, I'm like, I want out, you know, I, I just want, I just want to be done completely with, with investing in the, in the stock market. This is terrible. And he, he convinced me to leave my money in for the time being, you know, he goes, as long as you leave your money in, it'll come back. And it did come back, but it taught me one thing, and that was that I wanted to be in control of my investments and what I was doing. And, and, and as soon as I got out of the NFL, that's what I did, and I, I started going into real estate and something that I knew about. So I think that one thing that's really important uh, to kind of point out, and my guess is you carried this over into your real estate career, is, is you, you surrounded yourself, whether they were the best advisors or not, you looked to, to find a team of professionals to help educate you and help you make some decisions. How did that impact your career in the NFL doing that? Did that help or was it a, was, did it hurt you? No, absolutely. Uh, my, my biggest thing that I tell people that I talk to all the time, whether it be people in this industry or people in sports, is you have to surround yourself around knowledgeable people. Surround yourself uh, around people that you aspire to be like. And that's how I was able to be successful both in the NFL. Frozen. I, um, I definitely focus. Cool, man. Sorry, I had a phone call pop in real quick. I had to ignore. So you, you played in the NFL. Uh, you're playing with some really talented individuals. What's up with some of these guys that you – I watched a thing on Netflix. They'll get in, make a ton of money, and then they, they blow it all. They go broke. Is that a common thing in the NFL, or what, what's that all about? Yeah, the statistics are really, really high. Um, you know, you're talking 80% of the people, they say, are, are broke, divorced, bankrupt, whatever, by the time they get done. And um, it, it's interesting because being in the NFL, that's like your biggest concern, your biggest worry is what am I going to do when I'm done, you know? And um, everybody, it's, it's kind of like the life after, you know? It's funny. I, I tell people this story every, every, every time I can. Um, uh, I'm out here in Charlotte. And um, I'm still friends with some of the guys with the Packers, uh, Aaron Rodgers included, uh, John Kuhn, he plays for the Saints right now, a uh, guy that went to my high school, uh, or excuse me, my college, Jeff Janice, and, and we're having dinner out here in Charlotte before uh, the Panthers game a couple years ago, and they're like, they're very interested in what life is like after football, because you're just told, basically, you know, I mean... <laughs> You know, you're going downhill, you know, when it's done, you know, you're, you're going to be divorced, broke, all this stuff, you know. And so they're interested to know just like I was. And so it's very uh, encouraging. It's very rewarding to know that, you know, I was able to turn this into something, but I, I can't do it without the people that um, helped me along the way. Awesome, man. So Tim Livingston asked, how come you didn't mention your time on the Livingston's basketball team? How come you didn't mention that, man? <laughs> Yeah, that was my time when I was in Michigan. What's going on, Tim? How's it going? Good to talk to you. Um, yeah, uh, he, he invited me to play on his, his, his basketball team. He's another guy, though. I mean, you, you look at it, just surrounding yourself around positive people, you know. He's very successful, and that's, that's who I wanted to be with, you know, even though the age difference was, was like, you know, 30 years. But, at the, I mean, that's the, you need to know different parts of your life, you know, um, and I could relate to that and what he was doing. How was he? He's successful, and that's just always carried on for me. Awesome, man. So you, you made it into this 20%, one out of five people that, that survive life after the NFL. And you, 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 your husband, your father, right? I was checking your thing out. You got, you got a sweet little family there. Congratulations. Yeah. Successful in the real estate. So, so what, what made you fall into that one out of five, that 20% versus hanging out with that 80%, the guys that lost everything? Yeah, you know, I, I think I was fortunate the way that I was brought up, you know, um, 
I was never one of those guys that, that had everything handed to him. You know, I was, I went to a tiny, small private uh, Catholic school, Muskegon Catholic Central, wasn't necessarily the, the number one guy on that team. A small college wasn't the top guy on that team. And then I go to the NFL. I wasn't the top guy in the NFL. So I always had to fight for what I had. You know, it was never a situation where, you know, hey, I made it. You know, I never arrived, so to speak. So I always had that fight no matter what I did. So that continued on when I left football. You know, I still had to do that same thing. I still had to fight, still had to grind it out because I knew, you know, I had never arrived. So it, it can almost handicap you in a way, you know, when everything's given to you. So I feel fortunate that um, it wasn't. Awesome. So you had to you had to fight your way all the way along. So when when you're getting tired, when you're getting frustrated or overwhelmed or impatient, I'm sure you I don't know, maybe you've never experienced that. That's been part of my journey, right? You're hitting that frustration a few times. What gets you to go through and break through that emotional state to go to you know what? Fuck it, I'm going for it. Like I'm gonna go to the next level. What is it that pushes you? You know, I I think it's, it's gotta be my family. You know, that's, that's another thing that I was fortunate. You know, I had, I had kids at a young age, married at a young age. So I was never the guy that was always, uh, you know, doing it for me. I was always doing it for someone else. So, uh, that same thing drives me now. You know, I, I don't want my kids to be disappointed in me. You know, I don't, I don't want my family to be just disappointed in me. You know, if it was just for me, I mean, who knows where I'd be right now. You yeah. Uh, I'm very fortunate that, uh, it's not just for me. I'm doing it for other people, and, and that's what keeps me going. Awesome, man. That's what I, I, I dig about you so far is the fact that you are a family man, right? And um, I, there's a lot of pressure that, that husbands and fathers have on them to, to not only take care of their family, but to make sure that they, they aren't letting their shit fall apart. It doesn't mean there's not challenges, but you've got that drive. And, and my guess is your life hasn't been perfect. No one's is. And so you've got the family that's taking to the next level. I, I totally respect that and appreciate that. I appreciate that example because you just don't really see it out there from, from professional athletes anymore. Like it just seems like it's become this reality TV show for everyone, if that makes sense. So I think that's awesome, man. So here you are. Yeah, well. Oh, go ahead. I, I was going to say, you know, I, I think the one thing that sometimes gets missed with professional athletes is you don't hear the good stories because they don't make good news, you know. Yeah. Uh, you're terrible stories. and. And there's so many athletes out there that are just like me. Uh, the guys that I mentioned, for example, that I sat down and had dinner with, you know, they're just like me and, um, and, and they care and they're good people, but you don't hear those stories because that's not what makes good news. So um, I, I want to just stick up for those guys, you know, I mean, you, you saw the, the show on ESPN, right? Broke. Yeah. I mean, that a lot of people watched that and a lot of people loved it, you know, you don't see this, this story on ESPN that's called Family Man, uh, just living the normal life. You know, yeah. no, no one's going to tune into that. No one cares. So <laughs> there's a lot of guys that can do that um, and that do do that, but you just don't necessarily hear about it. That's funny you say that. One of my mentors and, and business partners, uh, uh, a founder of Fearless Agent, he said, you know, we don't have – we don't have a news media anymore. We have a bad news media, right? Like that's that's what they thrive off of, and that's what gets attention. So I'm glad you pointed that out. So some cool dudes in the NFL, it sounds like. So let's let's talk real estate now. Where, where are you at with real estate? What do you got with your organization? What do you got cooking on? Are you mainly investing? Are you mainly retail? You both? What what are you doing? Yeah. So when I first got into real estate, like I said, it was it was, it was investments. You know, it was it was house flips. It was rental properties, things like that. Which I know those opportunities are. Um, present themselves but right now i just started my my real estate team uh right now it's david and myself david harriman uh, and myself that's team rm82 and um you know it's it, it's going well uh I, I didn't really realize that real estate was going to turn into what it was uh, but i had a lot of people that were interested in me uh as far as house flips go they knew what i was doing and so i was able to get myself out there you know uh, and change, so to speak, the the mentality of what I was from a football player to an agent, which had its challenges, but I was able to do it. Awesome, man. What company are you with? I am with Costello Real Estate and Investments. Uh, it's a firm here that just got started probably about uh, three years. I think we're in year four now. And um, so I, I'm uh, got my own team, but we're, we're affiliated with Costello Real Estate. Awesome. Cool. I got a mastermind partner and friend of mine. He's in, in Charlotte and um, 
he just he left Keller Williams the first this year and went to EXP Realty. He's crushing it. Um, he's got an awesome team there. I think I think they'll probably do, I don't know, six seven hundred thousand in GCI this year. So great great market, right? I mean, you guys have a, a really you know I was in Charlotte about a year ago, so I, I stopped there once and ate at an IHOP. That was about it. And then I went in here last uh, last November. And I love how beautiful you guys' freaking trees are and those lakes and stuff, man. You guys have a beautiful place to live, man. So wh where, do you, where do you focus most of your business? Well, most of my business is focused on residential real estate. Uh, getting the team going has kind of been a challenge so far. But it's funny, anytime I run into any hurdles, and, and this goes back through NFL, you know, the fingers get pointed back at me. You know, what am I doing right? What am I doing wrong? So uh, the, the business itself uh, is going well. The team is, is, is continuing to grow, but it's going to take some time to get the, the name out there, the market out there. And so uh, that, that, that's pretty much what I've been focused on is, is getting that going. And it's, it's been going well so far. Awesome. So how long ago did you, did you start your team? Uh, it started this year. Okay. It started this year. January this year or just a couple months ago or what part of the year? Okay, cool. So what, how, were you just a single agent before then or – Tell before that yeah, what you did before I was a single agent before then and you know I had uh, had a lot in common with with David uh, as, as you, you you know him a little bit yep. we had a lot in common we kind of wanted to figure out and we had worked together previously when I was flipping houses he was working on them for me and then we kind of came together both as agents and he brings a lot of value to the table for his clients uh, because he has that knowledge you know he can easily go get a or, or quote, you know, issues while he's out speaking to clients and things like that. And so um, we wanted to figure out a way to put this together and, and get our team going together. And so that's that's kind of how it all all came about. Awesome. Cool, man. So what what's the goal as you wrap up 2017 or as you head into 2018 that you guys are looking to expand on? Obviously, my biggest goal is lead conversion. Um, we have a lot of uh, – leads that we've been able to come in into, but our, our systems uh, need to be dialed in a little bit better to convert them. Mm -hmm. when, when I got and, and, and uh, referrals and all that, I'm doing great. But just the random guy that calls, you know, getting those people converted, you know, I've watched, I've watched your videos. Uh, you're, you're from way back in the day. You look way different by the way, but you know, just, just speaking to people the way that you do on the phone, you know, uh, that, that takes a special person to do it. I don't know if that's necessarily one of my strengths, but I believe that in order for me to pass that on to the rest of my, my company, my team, I need to at least be able to say that I've been there. I've done that. I picked up the phone. I've called people. I've got cussed out. I've got hung up on and, you know, yeah. I still live, live to fight another day. So that's my goal is just to get stronger in that area um, because everything else is, is going well and, and, and it's just converting those random people that don't necessarily want to talk to you. They need to talk to me. They just don't know it yet. Yeah. Well, and that's what's, you know, I didn't have referrals. I didn't know what it's to do. Um, so I just started calling people, right? Like I didn't want to knock doors anymore because I did enough of that. I, I was a missionary for the LDS church. I was like, dude, I don't want to knock another freaking door in my life. I have walked all over Brazil. I'm done with that. Right. So let's just get on the phone. Right. Uh, yeah. So it's just got on the phone. And I just went with it and I learned and I just, just like you, man, I just, I've made mistakes. And I just kept learning from those mistakes. I didn't have it handed to me and I had to grind away to do it. With time, I realized, you know what? Hey, it doesn't matter if it's my SOI or if it's a cold call or if it's an internet lead or a FISBO. It doesn't matter. It's all about what value can I provide for this individual? And if they see the value, they're going to do business with me. If they don't see the value, well, then I'm going to go find someone that does. It's, it's, it's all the same. I appreciate that with you, though, that you want to make sure you really dial in that skill set as a team leader, because I see so many, so many team leaders that they want to they, they create this team and then they want to have their their guys or their agents do FISBOs or something. And, and they just they don't even know what they're doing. Right. So now they're they're training with a bad example. So I, I think that's awesome that you're really focusing on that to, to get that skill set. So cool, man. So what, what would you say is going backwards from your NFL career? What was the number one thing you learned from the NFL that you were able to take into your real estate career? Ooh, that's an interesting question. You should have teed me up on that one. So I have to <laughs> go 
going on here? I'm getting bombarded. No, I'm just joking. Um, you know, I, I think it's just, in general, it's just persistence. You know, I, I was never a guy that was able to um, really get my foot in the door in the NFL, so to speak. You know, I, I mean, I, my last four years in the NFL, I got cut every year. Now, I made the team after they cut me, but I got cut every single year. So, you know, just because something goes wrong the first time doesn't mean that you can't figure out what you need to do to make it right again. And I think I've been able to take that mentality into, into real estate. You know, I was speaking to somebody uh, the other day. There was a, 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 new, a new person to our, our firm, um, Costello Real Estate, and we sat down and we talked, and she just, she's, she's doubting her ability to be able to take her previous career and translate it into real estate, you know. Hey, hey as a real estate agent, you went to class. You, you, took, you, you, took, you got licensed. You know more than what the public knows, you know. You may not think you know it, but you do know it. You know, you have to be persistent. You have to have that confidence in yourself, and if you do, you could be successful. Yeah, I think that's so true. I mean, I look back at when my first 10 months in real estate, I sold two houses, right? Like I wasn't poised for success, dude. I was actually the guy that was going to drop out in the first 12 months. You know what I mean? Then I got lucky. I met Bob over at Fearless Agent. I, I, I signed up. And then in the next 12 months, I sold 22 homes. And this is, I mean, you saw my original videos. I wouldn't have bought or sold a home with me, dude. Like this kid, shaggy hair, just making these crazy videos, right? And then I just kept at it. I, so so many people in business, in success, in real estate, they want to make phone calls today and get paid their $100,000 next month, right? I have made, you know, I'm just barely probably hitting the point in my career where I've made over 10,000 hours of phone calls, right? And so when you start to hit 10,000 hours, you start to go to a next level. But it's, it's when you're at under 1,000 hours and under, you know, 3,000 hours, you got to, you got to keep persisting. You got to have that patience and it continues to develop. So I, that's an awesome point you brought up. So what would you say is the number one thing you have learned since then in your real estate business? Uh, the number one thing that I have learned uh, by far is you're going to get out of this business what you put into it. Uh, once again, fingers point back at me. If I have a slow month, what did I do the previous two, three months um, to, to prepare for that? You know, and every single time, no matter what happens, it comes back to what I put into my business. So for those people out there that think maybe I can do it, maybe I can't, you can do it as long as you put in the work because you will be successful. I mean, take you, for example, look at what you did for the first 10 months. You said you didn't really do that well, you know, 10, 10 deal or two deals, excuse me, but you continued and you were persistent. And now you're very successful. And so I, I think you, you will be successful if you put in the work and you don't give up. And that's what I learned is that I am responsible for my success and, and only me. Yeah, that's so true. And I couldn't, I, I wouldn't even, like when I first got into real estate, I was like, man, if I get making maybe a hundred, 200 grand a year, cause I grew up middle class, you know what I mean? Working class. I thought, man, if I can make 75 grand a year, I'm set, man. Like that's, and, and, and now to look fast forward here, 12 years later, to be even thinking that I'm, I'm on trail to, to start to hit that million dollar year mark is just insane to me to generate a business like that. You know, having months where I, I, I earn more in a month than I thought I would have ever earned in a year, is, it's, it's incredible. But it's because I kept, I kept pushing forward. I 100% agree with that is, is that anything is possible when you're willing to just go and, and hustle out and work for it. So let me ask you this, man. What is the number one thing that I can do to create value for you today? I want to know what I can do to help you bail out or come on, chat with me, and let me learn from you. What can I do to help you out? Well, promoting my team, my firm um, right now, Team RM82, that's, that's, uh, that's big. We're really trying to do everything we can to get the, this off the ground. You know, when you talk to me, hopefully next year this time, um, I'll have a whole different story. Like I said, it's fairly new. Our firm as well, Costello Real Estate and Investments. Um, even though they're, they've, they've got about three years, uh, experience on me, uh, they're kind of in the same boat, meaning that, uh, you know, we're, we're getting it started and, and it's going, it's going very well for them as well. So, uh, the promotion will be great and just continue doing what you're doing. You know, I really love you sharing the experiences that you've had so far. It's been helpful. You know, this industry is interesting because you can't always find someone to relate to. Uh, so to to hear you say the things that you say and to understand that we're kind of all, all going through the same thing is, is very helpful. 
Awesome, man. I appreciate it. So let's let's do a favor. Let's share this video so we can promote Costello Real Estate Investments. And tell me your team name again. You said it so fast. Name RM82. It's awesome. playing my initial my football number. Okay, awesome. So promote his team. And so anyone in Charlotte, uh, reach out to him if you're looking to buy or sell real estate. Reach out to him. Also, if you're looking maybe for a career in real estate, feel free to reach out to him if you're in the, the Charlotte area. Anything you want to wrap up with before we sign off? No, that's it, man. I just want to thanks for giving me, thank you for giving me the opportunity, man. I really appreciate it talking to you, and uh, best of luck to you and your business as well. Awesome, man. I look forward to watching you grow this next year. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Sounds good. Thanks.